in this lecture we will discuss about the most no points by a good doctor related to the topic dysmenorrhea okay actually dysmenorrhea is used as painful mensuration whereas the pain the patient may complain with the complaint of the dysmenorrhea during meals there can be abdominal cramp she can also complain of back pain there can be headache nausea vomiting or sometimes diarrhea okay usually in uh, in, in our uh, setting dysmenorrhea is uh, used as a painful uh, mensuration whereas the complaint uh, can be either uh, abdominal cramp back pain headache nausea vomiting or diarrhea during the menstrual uh, cycle which uh, coincide with the onset of the meals and may last for two to three days coincides with onset and last two to three days of the means period okay now uh, as we saw that uh, this is painful mensuration it can be divided into two types whether there is any underlying cause for that pain or there is no underlying cause if there is no underlying cause for the painful mensuration it is called as primary dysmenorrhea which constitute about the 90 percent of the dysmenorrhea whereas if there is any pelvic pathology which is causing pain Full uh, means that is secondary type which constitute for the remaining 10% of the dysmenorrhea okay now as we saw that the primary do not has the primary dysmenorrhea do not have any uh, underlying pathology uh, but the secondary do have uh, some sort of pathology okay Sometimes the dysmenorrhea may be associated with cyclic symptoms. Cyclic symptoms. This uh, cyclic symptoms can be either premenstrual symptom, premenstrual symptom, or it can also present as premenstrual dysphoric disorder premenstrual dysphoric disorder usually these are uh, depressive type of symptoms which uh, uh, if uh, if it is very severe needs antidepressant for their medication uh, may be required okay uh, so the psychological symptoms uh, may be begin approximately one week before the these both uh, symptoms usually begins one week before the cycle and regresses after the cycle is finished okay so um, as uh, i said earlier uh, the primary dysmenorrhea is treated symptomatically okay uh, because uh, symptomatic treatment ka matlab kya hua? because they are uh, suffering from pain we will prescribe them non-steroidal analgesic okay uh, NSAID can be given or cyclooxygenase mm, 2 inhibition can also be given this is the first line treatment cox2 inhibitor this is first line whereas the second line of the treatment for the primary dysmenorrhea will be primary ka treatment will be oral contraceptive pills this is the second line of treatment 
now coming to the secondary it is due to the pelvic pathology so find the pathology find the cause and then treat the cause and um, as a result the dysmenorrhea or the painful condition will be resolved treat the cause now uh, as we saw that uh, there was uh, some sort of uh, depressive illness which is known as premenstrual symptom or premenstrual dysphoric disorder uh, these are uh, dis depressive type of symptoms so uh, this can be treated with antidepressant like SSRI like it can be treated with sortalin sortralin or fluorzetin or parozetin okay this is all about the dysmenorrhea how did we start it dysmenorrhea is painful menstruation they can present with abdominal cramp back pain headache nausea vomiting or diarrhea okay always uh, it usually coincides with the onset of the menstruation and may last for two to three days of the cycle okay divided into primary and secondary if in primary there is no underlying cause and um, uh, constitute about 90 percent whereas the secondary has uh, some sort of pathology so that we should find the pathology and treat the pathology that is the treatment whereas the primary uh, because they are presenting with pain the first line of the management will be our NSAID or COX-2 inhibitor whereas the second line of management can be uh, oral contraceptive pills to uh, in some of the patient they also present with depressive type of symptoms so um, SSRI is prescribed so this is all about the dysmenorrhea topic